I can't slap the thing like I always do and go, bam, let's do some news. I gotta, I gotta use the, this guy, which I don't know if it'll, it won't quite be the same, I don't think, but I'll try it anyways. Kittens, happy belated birthday, and also, thank you so much for that. Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today is August 14th, 2020. Time is 4.15 p.m. We are a little bit late today. Uh, I did just get back from the dock where they cut off my uh, my cast that did not need to be cut off, but she decided to do it anyways. I was like, it's just an ace wrap. You can just take it off and the whole thing comes apart. She's like, no, that's fine. Just slice the whole thing up. Uh, in case you're wondering... Snowboarding accident. Middle of summer. Crazy. Like, absolutely. Yeah, just that's just, yeah. So that's, that's all. I have. Yeah. Uh, but it's broken and it's going to get better soon. Uh, but it might get worse before it gets better. If that's the news I got today, that uh, she said I did a great job setting it myself. She's like, You set it yourself? I was like, Yeah, because it was like, eh, like this and I needed to fix it. And so I did. I pulled it out and I, I reset it. She's like, You did a great job, but. I'm not sure if it's quite healing correctly. You may not be able to close your fist all the way in the future. We want to get that looked at. So they're going to send me to another doctor to go and take a look and see if this is something that they can, uh, if they need to do any kind of uh, surgery on it. So yay. But they want to get me in as soon as possible while the uh, bone is not quite healed so they could snap it a little bit easier. Um, she tried to do it today, but uh, she was a little bit concerned. She was like, maybe we should just go ahead and have the actual hand doctor look at this. So, so that's the status of this. Uh, they may have to put me in for surgery, but more than likely what will happen is he's just going to grab my finger, give it a good solid yank, and then reset it. And then I'll be back in a cast for a little while longer. Um, and then, uh, and then yeah, that's it. So uh, that's what happened. So fellow fellow teenagers, it's me on a skateboard. <sighs> So, uh, <laughs> welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming at a very last minute. I know I did not think I was going to make it because I thought I was going to be at the hospital this whole time, uh, but I did squeeze out early. I came back. I started slamming all the notes, like for finishing up all the notes that I possibly could for today's show. Um, but did you explain to them that you got to play gunfire update next week? Well, let me say this. I can actually hold a controller now. <gasps> Look at that. Look at that. Oh, it's so beautiful. Isn't it so beautiful? I could not do that. I could not do that. Mainly because, not necessarily because, like, it was painful, but because, well, it was a little painful, but because the cast was, like, in my palm. So it was, like, this huge chunk in my palm, and I couldn't get close enough to the fucking button to do anything. Last night, I'm playing video games with Olivia de Grace. We played Worms. We played uh, uh, Human Basketball, whatever, something Human Basketball, which is hilarious, by the way. Uh, we played something else. We were fucked up. Um, but but I, I was trying to play with the controller, and I'm, pl I'm playing with the controller like this with the cast. It didn't really work out. So, yeah. Fall Guys time. That's the first thing Declan said when I came back. I was I came back without a cast and I because I had this here at the house. And Declan said, can you play Fall Guys now? And I was like, yes, I can, son. <laughs> and he's like, yay. It's like, yeah. Oh, man. So, um. So hi everybody, welcome, thank you so much for coming at such short notice. Uh, lots of happen ha has happened in the past couple weeks, but we're gonna focus primarily on what was happening, what's happened in the past uh, 48 hours or so. 24 hours, really, a little over 24 hours. Uh, <laughs> starting with with the um, with the whole Epic versus the world debacle. Now, now, um, I have a couple, I have a couple of things here I gotta try to balance, uh, try to keep, Keep, keep mindful of, but first, let me open up a couple of notes here. I'm trying to give you guys uh, kind of a step-by-step -step on what has happened. Um, so, so, thought I heard something. Boy, hey, you gotta go. We're doing news. You, come here, give me a kiss, get out of here. <laughs> you gotta get out of here. Crip, thank you so much. No, seriously, I'm, shh, shh, shh. I'm doing news. You got to go. All right. I'll see you in an hour. I love you. I love you. You got to go. You got to go. Hey, I'm serious. You got to go. Bye. I love you. I'll see you in a bit. I love you. All right. Uh, so, yesterday morning, Bruh. early for many of us, uh, we had a tweet that went out from, oh, do, 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 from Fortnite Game, official Twitter. Uh, excuse me. I'm, I'm using a... Uh, 
I'm using kind of a rigged trackball system, so getting the getting links open and stuff is a little difficult. It requires a little bit of precision clicking. Uh, <laughs> so pardon me. So yeah, they put out a tweet yesterday morning, and they said that whoops, they said that whoops that uh, they're going to be offers a Fortnite Mega Drop lands today. Get up to twenty percent on savings on V Bucks, their in-game currency, uh, using select payment methods. Select payment methods. This isn't a short-term sale. These are our new prices. More info about availability in your currency and how it works in our blog. So, the last 40 hours, almost a week's worth. Yeah, for reals. Uh, so, yes, they, they came out and they said that this is, this is going to be a permanent sale. Uh, 20% off. Uh, and it's using specifically select methods. Very quickly, people discovered that the select methods... What that meant was they were circumventing. I don't have these links available right now, but they were doing direct purchases from the app. Now, on on uh, iOS devices and and uh, well, on iOS devices, period, pretty much. And uh, if you anything through the Google Play Store, you have to use their payment processors. So, like with Apple, if you have an app and it has in-game purchases, you can't just ask for a credit card number, right? The purchases have to go through the payment processor approved by Apple, which is pretty much Apple. Uh, there's only like 10 payment processors in the entirety of the United States, uh, but uh, and just 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 the US, okay? Just the US. Uh, so it's not like there's a ton of them, but Apple decides that they are the best ones for the job. So they're the ones that's gonna basically run those and do all the, do all the payments and everything for those. Uh, now, <clears throat> that also means that they wanna take a cut. And that cut is 30% for the first year that you're on the App Store and 15% after that. So if you sell an app on the App Store, you have a download the App Store and, they, and somebody downloads it and they play it on their, 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 uh, their phone and then they decide to buy something, they're going to take 30% from that for the first year, 50% after that. The only one, the, one of the, I don't want to say the only one because there's probably more, but one of the biggest ones that has a pass on this is Amazon because they, have, they were called an established platform. Whatever that means, pretty much just means that Amazon got their way, right? Uh, because if you notice, when you go to buy things through your Amazon app, you don't have to use the uh, the, uh, the the App Store or the iOS Store, or Apple Pay, or anything like that. It just goes through like normal. So it's a little bit of a different system. Also, Spotify. Spotify has a premium, and you pay the premium not through the Apple uh, Apple Store, which I believe is the same thing on, on the Google side. But with the App Store, I don't know if there's an option to actually purchase it through there. I know that you can buy and pay for subs like YouTube TV. You could pay for that through the App Store. But it costs like thirteen ninety nine, uh, not YouTube TV. I think YouTube Red thirteen ninety nine uh, versus nine ninety nine if you were to pay for it directly through the browser. If that makes sense. Um, what he says is, uh, what a joke! I pay two point three percent. 2.3% for payment process for a business granted the Apple store has more value add than just payment process, but still 30, 15, 30 slash 15% is ridiculous. Yes. And let me, let me just get this out of the way. This is, this is 100% corporate greed versus corporate greed. This isn't, we're, we're not trying to root for the good guy here. This is, this is, this is Trump versus Biden. We're trying to go for like the least likely to destroy everything kind of thing, but still it's going to be bad. Okay. Uh, that's, that's basically what we're dealing with here. Um, it's a good thing. It would be a better thing if, in my opinion, if Epic were to actually follow through with this and actually make changes, significant changes to the Apple platform. Let's talk about it for a little bit, a little bit longer. So uh, the Apple Store responded exactly the way everybody anticipated them as responding. They removed Fortnite from their from uh, from the App Store. Now, the people who uh, have the game installed can still play the game. They can still play the game just fine, but they'll not be able to get updates to the game, which means they will not be able to get the next season that comes out, which I don't know when that's scheduled for. But if if you've not been paying attention, like Fortnite seasons are huge, like absolutely huge. They, they, they come out with some crazy show or you know, guest stars or whatever. Like they always go way over the top with this stuff. <clears throat> Two evils fighting for my entertainment. That's right. That's basically it. Um and so they removed it from the App Store and Epic almost immediately files legal papers. They tweet out about it saying, Epic has filed legal papers in response to Apple. Read more here. You don't have to read more there because <laughs> I have it right here. So <laughs> Epic went through and sometime between five o'clock in the morning and 
about 10 o'clock in the 10, 10 a.m. in the uh, in the middle of the afternoon. Um, they decided to go through and uh, have 45 pages worth of a lawsuit written up. And I know that there's templates and I know that there's that there's that lawyers work quickly and all that stuff. But this seemed a little suspicious, it seemed a little suspicious, so wasteful. So oh God, it's so wa- why would Mike be waste all of that paper, all of that paper? Why would he do such a thing? I don't know why he would do that. God, maybe it's just the first five pages. Maybe that's me. That's what I did. Huh, let me check. check. Oh, yeah, that's, that's about right. That's about the first five pages or so. You filthy troll. I know. I know. So let me read to you what it says here on page. Uh, I believe this is four. It says, <clears throat> nature of the action. It says, in 1984, the fledgling Apple computer company released Macintosh, the first mass market consumer friendly home computer. The product launch was announced with a breathtaking advertisement evoking George Orwell's 1984 that cast Apple as a beneficial revolutionary force breaking IBM's monopoly over the computing technology market. Apple's founder Steve Jobs introduced the first showing of the 1984 advertisement by explaining, it appears IBM wants it all. Apple is perceived to be the only hope to offer IBM a run for its money. Will Big Blue dominate the entire computer industry? The entire information age? Was George Orwell right about 1984? I mean, yes, but... Fast forward to 2020, and Apple has become what it once railed against, the behemoth seeking to control markets, block competition, and stifle innovation. Apple is bigger, more powerful, more entrenched, and more pernicious, pernicious, I can't believe I messed that up, pernicious than the monopolists of yesteryear. At a market cap of nearly $2 trillion, Apple's size and reach far exceeds that of any technology monopolist in history. Yo, Semites. <clears throat> Didn't read ahead on that one, sorry. So... In response to this, on top of on top of this, adding to this, in game, I gotta get my I gotta get my rig over here so I can actually move the mouse. They released a video echoing the 1984 sentiment that they were just talking about in the lawsuit. And here it is. It's only 45 seconds. I'll play it for you. If you've seen the original ad, uh, you'll recognize this shot for shot remade. Here you go. So, Epic Games has defied the App Store monopoly. In retaliation, Apple is blocking Fortnite from a billion devices. Join the fight to stop 2020 from becoming 1984. <laughs> and it's so it's so corny. It's so damn corny. It's so corny, but and I, you know it's funny. This is actually my first time watching this this Fortnite pre, uh, uh, playthrough. I've seen like thumbnails and everything. It's like I've already seen the original so many times. I need to see it. I want to wait for the show. And damn, that's hilarious. Um, but yes, yeah, so Epic is doing their they're they're doing their part in painting Apple as being the ones that they had once rallied against, as they stated here. It's far reaching BS. It's far reaching. It's so dumb. It's is it far reaching though? I mean, God. Let's see. Let's see. So some people say that Epic is weaponizing their the, the their youthful demographic because they know that if they threaten an army of kids or teens i guess now uh that they won't be able to get the next season update that could give them a lot of traction and so hashtag free Fortnite was uh was trending for a bit and uh, i believe probably still is getting a couple couple tweets out there weaponizing 13 year olds teddy says uh their youthful demographic haven't read 1984 probably well that this art the the beauty of this ad that they've recreated is that just like the original 1984 ad they did you didn't really have to know or have read 1984 sure nobody's reading 1984 anymore 
but that doesn't mean that the message is lost just because we understand the reference and maybe we don't think that younger folks get the reference and it's true maybe younger folks younger folks don't get the reference but that doesn't mean that the message is completely lost the same way that the original message was conveyed against IBM right it's like the monopolistic thing all this stuff right this message still rings true it's great marketing for those who fall who will uh, blindly buy into marketing nonsense basically kids uh, <laughs> so some people say and uh, this is an article I actually came across on uh, games industry biz and I know that some of you guys will hold the same, probably the same uh, uh, thoughts in terms of like your perspective on this. But in this article written by Rebecca Valentine, she goes over, she basically talks about how this is uh, a, a slippery slope, essentially, could potentially open, expose kids or children or underage folks, whatever, into uh, having to rely or let me just read some of this shit here. So <clears throat> it says you can easily forgive him for instinctively marveling or laughing yesterday at the video that accompanied Epic sudden and a complete pivot to an all out war against Apple and Google, which is basically what it was. It was just out of nowhere. It's great. Uh, it's just, it is after all an abs- a pretty absurd video that Epic has clearly had in its pocket for some time now, ready to play as a calculated move in a weird 3d chess match between several multi-billion dollar tech companies. First, the side step of the storefront revenue cuts. Then the game is pulled. Then the video, the tweets, the statements, a lawsuit, Epic based, Apple bits and so she goes over shows the video and then it says while this may sound a bit to someone think of the children it's clear Epic is already thinking quite a bit about the children Epic Games is not a stupid company it's aware that its audience of millions skew very young and is augmented by numerous streamers and content creators who uh, have even further reach and influence outside of the out of outside of the Fortnite's walls. Epic knows well that its video plays it to an audience that doesn't understand the nuance and complexity of the battle it's about to fight, and frankly has no reason to. That's why its concluded concluding message is boiled down so simply. Apple wants to take away your video games. We're fighting back. Join us. Uh, so I'm 100% on Epic's side here. They aren't suing. Uh, this is kittens. Uh, they aren't suing for damages. That's right. Uh, or an exception for just themselves. They're advocating for the entire industry. That's correct. Uh, I actually had a pretty good conversation with, uh, and I actually took some screenshots because I thought it was a good one because I know, like I said, I know that there's going to be people who are, uh, uh, who, so the first thing my friend says to me, listen, he says, wait, you're rooting for Epic versus Apple and Google, but you root for Steam against Epic, right? He's trying, he's trying, he's, he thinks he got me and I'm sure, I'm sure someone out there thinks the same thing. So I said, Epic was wrong for locking exclusives down to the, to their platform, not allowing cons- consumers to buy from where they wanted on PC, outside of the store issues, okay? Uh, Apple is wrong for doing the exact same thing, forcing exclusives by platform. Uh, it's, I said, not to mention, it seems that they only do it to games, which is also true. It's also true. So Apple wants their fair share to keep their money, no work done. Uh, it says, so... He says, I'm not saying Apple is entirely in the right here, but it's just Megacorp versus Megacorp. Apple is very consistent, except with a couple of their deals like Amazon, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, and he says, I'm very anti-Epic in this case. And this is where him and I defer on this. Uh, he says, they are using some dirty fucking tactics to try to get public on their side. And thankfully, it has backfired as much as it's helped, especially with Google. Android is as open as you can, as you can get as a platform. Removing Fortnite from the Play Store, which Google did, not not Fortnite. Uh, removing Fortnite from the Play Store just shows they're fucking over their users to try to strong, strong arm Google. And so, in my opinion, and I'm not a lawyer, but when they come out with a sale for mobile platforms, they need to have a unification of that sale, of that promotion. They're not going to say iOS only 20% off permanently, because that might look bad, not just to every, to the message they're trying to convey, and the, the, what they're trying to do, because it's clear they're trying to take Apple down a peg and try to open them up a bit more. But also... But also, they're trying to uh, not set themselves up to look like they were specifically targeting iOS. Okay? So, to me, that's what it feels like. Like, they're saying all all mobile platforms, and maybe, you know, if Android gets pulled, then there's collateral, collateral damage for the greater good. So, <clears throat> we go back and forth a little bit. And I think he gives, he brings us some good points. Some good points. We talk about like what happens when you open up these platforms because that's the biggest problem with iOS. And I know a lot of you guys are Android users because every time I mention that I have an iPhone, I get a lot of shit. Okay, so I'm certain probably all of you guys are Android users. And let me tell you, as a as a former Android user, I do appreciate the platform. I think it's great, but I do like the way iOS runs things. Now that being said, 
we're way past this whole thing of having a platform that's completely locked down where only one there's only one avenue of approach the way i look at it is these ios devices in in the us and in the world there are fucking billions of them i would say that more people use that more people use their phones than desktop PCs. I, I, without even looking it up, I did not look this up, but I'm certain that's the case across the board. So if Windows was, what Microsoft came out and said, hey, you can only install apps and programs if you get it through the Microsoft store, people would shit themselves. After everything that happened with Microsoft, the antitrust lawsuits that they were dealing with, with Internet Explorer being bundled with Windows, that was a huge thing. I think they're probably still dealing with that. Uh, this is stuff that would not fly because Windows is an open platform. No, we, we can't. You wouldn't do that. So why does Apple get a pass on this? At least with Android, Android gets... So you could sideload. You get a ton of warnings that come up. Oh, yeah, you can't do this. You can't do it. Be careful because they're going to steal your information, all that stuff. Sure. But you can still sideload stuff. That's something that you can't do on iOS devices. I say can't, asterisk, because you could jailbreak. Sure. But that's also a great way to void everything with the phone. Um, it says, uh, I use Android. However, I couldn't care what platform people use. Buy and use. Okay, sure. Um, so because my company is widely successful and I adhere to some arbitrary rules, what a small company wouldn't. Well, let's keep going. Um, so in my opinion, I think it is unfair that Apple has a monopoly. And I saw this really, really fantastic analogy. I don't know where I saw it, but imagine you have a kiosk at the mall. When you have a kiosk at the mall, you pay for the placement, you pay for you know rent. Um, but if this was Apple's mall, you would pay for the placement, but you would also pay, you would also have to pay them for every transaction that you would make. And that seems unfair. Malls don't do that. As far as I know, malls don't do that. I've never heard of a mall like taking a cut from people's sales from kiosks. Usually you, it's consignment. Usually you pay for that space. And then if you make sales, great. If you don't make sales, then you're still paying for the space. Um, and so <clears throat> jailbreaking void warranties, if you brick the phone, I'm certain it will, but also I, there's also a bunch of, uh, uh, I don't believe you could jailbreak every version of iOS, like right away. Like obviously there's a delay, but anyways, um, they may, you know, street food vendors pay, pay, uh, for space and give their, well, I don't know about street food vendors. I'm talking about malls specifically. Um, they can't have an option because Android exists. I, that's, that's the funny thing, right? Like, yeah, it's like, well, because something exists, that means it's not a monopoly. It's like, that's not entirely true. Like basically on iOS, the only way to get anything is to go through the iOS store. That's pretty much it. There's been a couple things of kind of slid by. You could jailbreak and do all that. But at the same time, you would, uh, you'd, potentially jeopardize your phone. Whereas with Android, you can just, I mean, you, you don't have to modify the OS in any way. You could just say, allow external installs or whatever. I can't remember what it, what it was called, but it was like just a checkbox basically. It's like allow from unknown sources or something like that. Um, so yeah, I do feel like it's time for Apple to, uh, to open up a little bit. And I don't know what that is. And that was a discussion that him and I had as well. It's like, we don't know what the middle ground is here. Let me read what he wrote. Cause I like what he wrote actually. So he wrote, he said, Windows 10 is moving in that direction and consoles have been that way forever. Not saying I disagree with you, but there are other platforms if you want open. Being locked down provides a number of benefits, including security, stability, ease of use. On the other hand, it also provides a new revenue stream for the company that locked things down, which is how Apple works. They take 15 or 30 percent. Um, ideal world is people have a choice. Uh, but I don't think that choice can exist inside the same platform or else it removes a lot of the benefits. In a functional government, they would get involved and find out a happy middle ground that would work for consumers. But we do not have a functional government, so we need to pledge our loyalty to one of the megacorps and double down, which is basically what we're doing. Yes, it's true. It's Epic versus it's Epic versus fucking Apple and, and Google now. Um, let me catch up on this. Uh, so... Uh, so I know you guys are responding to each other, but it says, I disagree with Google because uh, you have Amazon Coin, which is discount over in uh, game purchase on Android. And even has the Apple ecosystem are locked in. I don't know how I don't know how Apple functions in terms of that. Um, holy fuck, we are living in cyberpunk. Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah we are working towards it. Uh, what he is saying is that you are waiting until the EU slaps Apple on the wrist. The EU will probably be the first one to do something. Yeah. 
That's 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 basically what he's saying, and, and I agree with that. Like that's I think the EU is probably the first ones that would be able to make a move on that. We had so you know my follow up to that was that one of the reasons why because we talked about how um, consoles are always or have always been that way. You like you can't side load an app into uh, uh, into a PS4 unless you count putting a disc in, but that doesn't it's not really the same thing. Um, You've already pledged yourself to another mega. Sorry, it's fine. Uh, but this is definitely uh, this is definitely a calculated move, a timing move, because we just had the antitrust uh, congressional hearings that happened with uh, Microsoft, Facebook. Uh, um, obviously, uh, we had uh, Google and uh, Apple and and Amazon. That's right. That's right. So they had the CEOs of those companies there and they were asking the questions and everything. And basically nothing really came of it. Nothing really came of it. The only thing that may have scared some of us was, uh, was the questions about, uh, DMCA and music and, and the legality of fair use and all that stuff, which was kind of scary, but nothing really happened. So shh, everything's fine. Um, Demolition Man to Franchise Wars. Yeah. If Epic wins, we could see a future where people can silo apps and non jailbreak broken iPhones. Maybe. There is a happy medium. I mean, I don't know exactly what that could be, but what Epic is clearly working towards is trying to get the Epic Game Store in uh, as a platform like Steam on your phones. And obviously, if that happens, Steam would be there, too. Um, GMG would be there as well. GOG, GGG. Like, I mean, like every, any the, everybody that sells games, any platform that sells games would we'd be like, oh, let's. Let's also get involved with this. Um, it says uh, there's two parts of the suit that Epic could win. Alternate, alternative app stores and alternative payment methods. Exactly. And like I said, here in the States, there's only about 10, you know, about 10 payment processors. So it wouldn't be difficult for Apple to sit down and just go through and vet those process, those, those payment processors, at least here in the States, uh, and get that rolling. I don't know about the UK or anywhere else where, or sorry, the UK, the EU or anywhere else where, uh, like how many different payment processes they have available to them. But I'm sure it's something that if they wanted to do it, they could. Of course they could. It's not like they can't do it. They could vet these companies and, and go through and come up with some kind of, you know, some kind of system where they can hold them accountable if, if their if information gets stolen or whatever. Uh, the same way that, you know, that uh, platforms are held accountable if there's too many chargebacks on that platform. That's why if you go to OnlyFans and try to use your American Express card or your PayPal business card, it gets den denied because it's blacklisted because too many chargebacks. So that's something that Apple can can hold people, hold these payment processors accountable for. Uh, Uncle Gaben is coming for your library. <laughs> You should have pledged. You should have pledged to the Valve Mega Corp. You should have. You should have. Dang. Um, <clears throat> so this is a great article here that uh, I had to turn off dark mode because I can't read my own notes here. Uh, this is a great article that was actually written by Jason Schreier on Bloomberg. Wow, see how bright it got. Jesus. Let me just. I'm just gonna read you this stuff here. Uh, so here's a couple quotes from the article. So the title is "Gamers Game Game Makers Give Apple the Antitrust Grilling Congress Didn't." Because like I said, the uh, Congress was a little was a little light on it, but they also don't know what they're talking about when it comes to tech. So uh, here, pull this up, second screen. So this is all well and good, but Epic are massively shady and they're not fighting for the gamers like they're trying to posture, else they'd have paid the people they stole the dances from the one to four. I saw that tweet too. Not saying that's where you got it from, but I saw that message being shared all over the place as well, um, which is fine. I, I don't I don't think that that is something that applies to what we're working on here. It's kind of like, I, I mean, for every single step, it's like someone's got to find like six steps behind that where it's like, well, you also didn't do this. It's like, well, let's just let's just take one step at a time and see what we could tackle. Um, but yes, obviously, that, that is that is an issue. Poor Carlton. Uh, so it says uh, last week, Microsoft criticized Apple for barring its Xbox Game Pass service from the iPhone and iPad. Apple's quote, Apple stands alone as the only general purpose platform to deny consumers from cloud gaming and game subscription services like Xbox Game Pass. Uh, and it consistently treats gaming apps differently, applying more lenient rules to non-gaming apps when they include interactive content. And so Apple says that it doesn't let cloud-based gaming services on the App Store because it needs to review all games individually before they can run on the platform. So last year, last year, Apple launched Apple Arcade, $4.99 monthly 
subscription to give access to a library of premium games across its devices. So not only do they have the app store where they're making money off of sales through there, whether it's direct sales for the app or if it's uh, sales through microtransactions within the app itself, uh, but also they have a library of premium games that they vet and they're charging a a monthly subscription fee for those games. And I did subscribe to it and I was woefully uh, unimpressed. Like I was just so unimpressed with the collection they had. They were just, they were just mobile games. Sure, they had fancy graphics and they take advantage of the of the graphics processor and all that stuff, but it's still, it was still just like, these are just this a dime a dozen games. Maybe a couple good ones, but uh, let me see. Uh, so it says, uh, does Epic only fight for the gamers when it benefits them? Just wondering. Well, if it benefits benefits them monetarily, absolutely. Uh, and yes, they're, they're double dipping. It does it does feel that way with Apple. Like they could they can just explore all of these different avenues and ways to make money on their platform using other people's games. But you can't do that with your games, though. Somebody like Epic, or somebody like Origin with EA, or Ubisoft, you play, or Steam, Valve, right? They can't do that. But Apple can on a platform where they have a billion devices and they have a massive amount of reach. So, yeah, that feels a little bit unfair to me. It really does. Uh, it says, while this obviously has significant benefits for Epic, Tim Sweeney has a pretty long history of taking principled stands against platforms imposing excessive burdens on developers. He has. And I have definitely given him shit for a number of things in the past. And, you know, some people are going to bring up the Tencent thing. I'm sure that's probably going to come up. Uh, so I want to remind you that he did address some of that stuff directly. He's pretty blunt when it comes to that stuff. So let me read some of this here real quick. This is from 2019. We actually talked about this. It says, I support everyone's right to complain about tech industry stuff, Epic Store with exclusive games, a Spartan feature set, and all that stuff. But he says, but he says he wants to clear the air a little bit. So he says, Tencent is a Chinese company founded in 1998. And he says that... Uh, he said, oh, here he goes. I am the controlling shareholder in Epic Games and have been since 1991. We have a number of outside investors now. Tencent is the largest. All of Epic's investors are uh, investors, our friends and partners. None can dictate decisions to Epic. None have access, access to Epic customer data. Now, you can choose whether or not you believe him or anything, but he does say all of Epic's big decisions are made here in the USA. And as CEO, I am 100% responsible for them. I'm grateful for anyone who has spoken in support. I also read and respectfully consider all descending arguments of fact and principle. Just please keep it real, which I have to say Tim Sweeney has. Sure, he likes making money. He likes having a successful, successful company, but he's definitely kept it real, whether we like it or not. <laughs> With some of the stuff that he's done. Uh, so furthermore, going back to the other article here, it says, um, so yeah, last year, $4.99 a month subscription for Apple Arcade, lackluster collection of games. Uh, and then down here, it says the gaming, the gaming industry perhaps has the loudest voice in the antitrust argument against Apple because App Store rules are often the most strict on games. In addition to barring cloud-based gaming services, which have been popularized by Google, NVIDIA, and Microsoft, Apple doesn't let gamers subscribe outside of the App Store and then use a subscription on an iPhone and iPad. Such an exemption is made for music, video, news, and cloud, and uh, cloud and business apps. So, yes, there is a bias against games. We know that games is a huge money maker for for uh, for Apple. We know this, um, and it definitely again like the fact that they're targeting this this industry and trying to you know, come up with all these different ways they can make money. It's bullshit. <laughs> it is bullshit. I never get I didn't, I didn't give a shit before because I'm not a developer putting games on there. I thought it was silly that they were able to do this. I think I've commented on that in the past. It was silly they were able to just take people's games and, and put them into whatever system they want to make money off of them, take a cut. But that's just the way it works. It's a lockdown system. We reap the benefits of having the security of having a closed system with nobody can side load apps that can copy your keystrokes or anything like that. No, we have totally approved apps like TikTok that copy your keystrokes and whatever's on your clipboard. That's right. Yeah, totally secured and locked down. So <laughs> it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like we're at the point where we can continue having this closed off system exclusively. There has to be a limit to how much power Apple can have over this, uh, over their devices. I hate, yes, it's their devices, but even, even on their MacBooks and all of their desktop line, that's their hardware, right? Just like this is their hardware. Uh, that's their operating system, but you can still buy applications 
separate from the App Store on OS X. So why is that still a thing on here? It does not make sense. Um, so who cares that they're fighting for their own self-interest if they're not if there's if there's a net collateral benefit to us? That's right. That's true. And there is. I mean, especially if you if not just on yes, this may look like it's an iOS fight, but I mean, just in general, if this opens the doors and allows Valve to have a presence, if I can have, I can already Steam Link and play a ton of games on my phone, okay? Why can't I just have the games on the phone? Obviously, not all of them are going to work, but there are some that I'm sure I could probably play on the phone just fine. I'm certain they could probably, I could probably play Fall Guys on my phone, a game I already own on Steam. I could probably load that up on my phone and play it if, the, if Steam had an iOS version. So this is, this could be a net positive for us uh, if if Epic and Mom somehow manages to chip away at this behemoth that Apple has become. So, so that's it. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure Tim Cook uh, said they treat all apps equally to Congress, and we know that's not true. Of course, it's not true. Amazon, this boy was sitting right next to him. Of course, yeah, it's not, absolutely not true. Uh, so I would want there to be a dumb precedent that other asshole big corp will uh, use to charge us more. I think the more competition that you have on uh, any system in any in any economy, the more competition you have should drive prices down. Well, maybe not. You can Steam Link to iOS. You can Steam Link from iOS to your desktop. Yes. Yeah. Um, Top, if you're here, Top could vouch for it. Top plays uh, Monster Train on his phone. Uh, but I've played a number of... I played Felseal on my phone. I play a number of games on my phone. It works beautifully. Uh, and also, it also works uh, not on the same Wi-Fi. Initially, it would only work... Uh, Steam Link's only worked on Wi-Fi, the Steam Link hardware. But the Steam Link app will actually allow you to play your games remotely as well if you have a strong enough connection. It's pretty cool. And you could also... Sync your Xbox controller to it and play uh, using a controller. It's pretty awesome. Anyone know if consoles takes cuts from in-game purchases? I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. Uh, all apps are equal, but some apps are more equal than others. <laughs> That's right. Yes, more competition. Competition is always good, and try to keep entry price as low as possible. We have seen what this shit does to internet infrastructure in U.S. Well, I mean, like when all the inf internet's basically owned by like three companies. Um, if Epic managed to get this through, fair enough. Uh, the net positive is there for gamers and iPhone users. However, I think it puts wind into the sails of a company like Epic to try to further shady practices, uh, a la PC game exclusivity levels of shade. Yes, I am not. I'm not saying that Epic is the hero now. They're the anti-hero. <laughs> yes, they have done some things in their past that I do not appreciate even now uh, that I don't like. The Epic Game Store is still kind of trash, but the return system is forgiving and I appreciate that. So thank you so much for that. Um, but that doesn't mean that they, that doesn't mean that we can't give them some kind of credit for doing what they're doing now, because who else is going to do it? Fortnite was like the biggest game on iOS or mobile platforms. I mean, maybe even still today, uh, arguably, depending on what metric you look at. Like maybe not in the past 30 days, but over the past couple of years, I would say probably yes, that and Minecraft. So I don't see Mojang, you know, pulling up the bootstraps and, uh, and getting a lawsuit going. I definitely see Epic doing that. So this is something that we do want to see. And Microsoft has joined in. Microsoft has joined in, again, saying that... Yeah, you wouldn't let us have Xbox Game Xbox Game Pass because it's a streaming game service and Apple wants to approve every single game. Just like their Apple Arcade service. Um, so Epic is a dead pool of video game platforms. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> They're currently championing a good cause. We can appreciate that. Yes. What Epic isn't also saying that you can buy their in-game V-Bucks anywhere on their platforms and use them anyway. So if you originally bought the V-Bucks from App Store, you can go to your PC and use them there and vice versa. That's true. That's true. But they weren't you weren't allowed to purchase it on the phone uh for the price that you could pay you could pay for it on on uh, on your desktop. Because of the reduction in price. Actually, I don't know that for sure. I'm sure you guys could probably... Hammer, you probably should play Fortnite, right? <laughs> I don't want to accuse anybody of something so so dire. You probably play Fortnite, don't you? <laughs> Epic shouldn't have weaponized their fans and players and, and probably should have tried to create a council of other companies instead. Uh, and I'd probably been okay with that. I understand that. I understand that perspective. Absolutely. I've, I've read that. I've read that. Uh, I... Games Industry Biz, that's the article is about. They don't like the fact, the way that they did it. But you know what? This got them a fuck ton of headlines. So that was the 
first thing I said when I saw that they were bypassing the iOS's payment structure, I said, what's a great way to get headlines for your game? <laughs> Bypass their payment payment processor. Oh, mom says, good news from the doctor today. I'll respond later, mom. Um, says, not all kids or people have a PC able to play the game, but like everyone probably has a phone to play the game. There you go. Uh, no, Epic is more like a... Like one of the Suicide Squad than Deadpool. There you go. I love Fortnite. There you go. Tick G. Get it. Get it. Good. Good. That's totally fine. Um, so, so that's that. I'm. I am genuinely looking forward to the YouTube comments on this because I know this is something that people are going to be completely split over. Uh, hopefully, I've made my case from my perspective. I try to present my friend's case because he is not pro epic in this in this regard um but i think both him and i agree that there there could be a middle ground here but we can't we can't rely on apple making that dis determination we can't rely on the u.s government ma government making that determination we're gonna have to worry we're gonna have to rely on uh on you know somehow this this lawsuit with epic like actually getting some teeth and really kind of taken off or like the eu clamping down doing something about it so um in which case i don't know maybe maybe they're equally as incompetent i have actually no idea but i know that ours is so <laughs> hey welcome ceos of the biggest tech companies in the world so uh tell me what, what is it? they asked them about like Donald Trump's tweets getting removed or something like that to 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 Mark Zuckerberg again. I can't just I can't believe it. I can't believe it. So yeah. Speaking of great big companies and a whole lot of money, this is actually some some uh, some good news. Some good news. So, uh, <laughs> EA shareholders. Da, 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 there we go. EA shareholders say no to massive proposed raises for executives. Let me scroll down and show you guys the numbers here. So the rejected payment plan included a proposed 21.37 million in total compensation for CEO Andrew Wilson in the 2020 fiscal year, up from 18.3 million. So 3 million increase. Uh, other executives were set to see much larger bumps. CFO was gonna get 9.4 million, oh, sorry, from 9.4 million to 19.5 million double uh and the uh chief studios officer like a cso uh, was going to go from 6.95 million to 16.1 million like two and a half times increase uh cto kenneth moss 16 6.95 million to 14.2 million so it says an assortment of investor groups rallied against ea's proposed compensation plan ahead of votes including influential proxy vote advisors, institutional shareholder services, and union-affiliated CTW investment group. Public employee retirement funds in New York and California follow these groups' lead in voting against the proposal, helping lead to its defeats. EA is not acting like a megacorp. They tried, but their shareholders said no. Finally. Um... Oh, Subwizzy says, so currently people with the app already on their phones are locked out of buying stuff? No, but they don't get the next season. So you could, if you still have the game installed, Fortnite, uh, then you could still you could still play the game. And I believe you could probably make purchases, but you cannot. Actually, I don't know if you make purchases, but you don't get the next season, though, for sure. Um, it was, uh, it was, uh, did this also just fire some more peeps? Yeah, the shareholders are the ones that are standing up for them, standing up to them now. So this is, this is good news. I mean, we typically report on when these guys get these massive raises and then we see like, like crazy layoffs. So it's nice to see for a change, uh, that, uh, we're seeing a bit of, uh, a bit of a shift there. Um, good job, EA shareholders. That's right. That's right. Some good news there. Um, further see i don't want to put uh, 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 uh. okay so this one i can't show you guys <laughs> i can't show you guys this one and i'll explain why so dr disrespect is back in streaming <laughs> on youtube he is still banned from uh he's still banned from twitch and uh he has said and I, I have the clip here that I wanted to play, but I can't play it uh, because he's banned on this platform. And technically, I could get banned for showing his face on the platform or something. Um, and he said that he still does not know why he is banned. He says he still doesn't know why, why he's banned um, and that Twitch has not told him. And he was very serious about it. You know, he's very, very, very serious. He took off like two pairs of sunglasses to tell us that he was not... Nah. 
Uh, you even allowed to mention his name? Oh, I'm sure I can. Well, I hope so. <laughs> if I get banned for that, I'll raise a stink. <laughs> I'll raise a stink. <laughs> but he is back. He is streaming on on YouTube. Um, he opened up to 500,000 viewers, uh, which is a significant number. And uh, and he had a good first day. Today, he has actually streamed with, I didn't see it, uh, but I believe maybe he's streaming right now. He streamed with uh, PewDiePie. So he actually opened him up to be able to play with a different set of people. Now, we know that he's buds with uh, Shroud, who also made his comeback this week. Shroud made his comeback, and I, I sincerely did not think that he would pull the numbers that he pulled. I, th I was thinking he was going to pull between 150 and 200,000. Shroud himself said he was expecting 200,000. Uh, he had 500,000 people watching uh, his stream within the first uh, hour or so. It's crazy. Yeah, our, yeah, this is our generation's biggest mystery. We'll, we'll never know what's happening with uh, with, with that. Um, but what's funny, I caught this little thing. I, I made this little clip here. I thought it was pretty funny because I feel like this might be a little bit of a jab at uh at well, yeah, hold on whoop, at uh dr disrespect but let's go ahead and play it well yeah i was expecting to get like 200k because i know myself oh. and i figured you guys know me i'm not gonna have like crazy epic you know seven minute video you know driving in a lamborghini you know and just rolling down the window and shouting at random kids like an old man you know <laughs> but yeah i was expecting to get like two <laughs> Which is funny because today I watched Dr. Disrespect's intro because he was going to play a PewDiePie and I wanted to see how that worked out, but apparently PewDiePie was late. And that's exactly what his intro is. It's exactly what his intro is. If you haven't seen it, I can't show you, of course. But but yeah, so Shroud is back. He's got a beard, um, which is weird for some reason. I, I don't feel like it's weird when I do it, but when Shroud does it for some reason, that's weird. It's also thick, man. I can't do that. It's thick beard. It's crazy. Um, so... So yeah, these guys are coming back. Ninja, I think, is still not back, but Shroud was out for like 45 days or so, and he said he had a good time. Twitch starts lagging. <laughs> Shroud, yes, yes. So uh, Dr. Disrespect also tweeted a picture of uh, of uh, Adam Sandler and Uncut Gems, and that's, yeah, I'll just pull up that picture, actually, because it's, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Let me see. Let's pull this up. And there we go. Yeah, so <laughs> just... Just, a, just randomly at the same time that Shroud was having his intro. Just threw that out there. It's pretty much on point. Um, <laughs> it's his only way to talk about him since you can not You can get banned just by uh, saying his name. It's like Voldemort, isn't it? <sighs> he shall not be named. Um, gosh, I mean, other news. That's basically it. Like, really. Um, there's more. There's more stuff, but I didn't have time to go through and collect a lot of, a lot of this other kind of uh, fringe stuff that was happening over the past couple weeks. Um, Fall Guys came out. And that, apparently, like, broke everything. Fall Guys came out. Obviously, I couldn't play it for a while. I could play it now, so I'm really excited about that. Um, Fall Guys came out and just, I mean, there's... Their, their social media is on point. The game is a lot of fun. Um, I mean, my kid loves it. I think it's great. I can't wait to play it. I mean, it's basically a super easy game to get into. If you haven't seen it, it's a game where you... It's, think of it like uh, MXC or Wipeout or whatever other American Ninja Warrior or whatever. It's just, it's basically a, a physics, physical kind of like platformer, 3D platformer. Uh, and you have a number of puzzles and obstacles you have to go and, uh, and tackle with... 59 other people <laughs> so it's chaos um Takeshi's castle oh sorry I knew I missed one god sorry <laughs> yes so it is it is like that but you have 60 people running the gamut at once and then every time you progress you lose a chunk of those people it could be like 30 people off the first one and then 10 people off the second one and then by the time you get to the end there's only a handful of people and and you have to get to the crown and the person that gets the crown is the winner um but it's it, their social media presence is just astounding. Uh, there's stuff like this all over the place. Chuck E. Cheese. Everybody's making their own custom avatars. If we go to the Fall Guys game actual Twitter account, like they have, let's go to their media here and see if there's, uh, there's actually, they're all retweeting stuff. There's just, they just have a number of just weird shit that they're just completely, like, yeah, they're just, they're just owning this. Like, they are, they've taken their, uh, their social media presence and it really, really, really worked out. Look at the Meet the Scout. Oh, man. So good. 
as far as I know, none of these things are actually available in game. It's all this is mostly all just people just memeing and just making like little remixes of whatever. It's crazy. Like the hug one. There's a bunch actually I'm probably got it on the wrong side here. We we'll go to their uh, uh to the actual tweets, probably see a little bit more here because they'll show the retweets of the things that there we go. Yep. So yeah, you know, little baby Yoda. Look at this nonsense. It's crazy. Everybody's going crazy over this. Um I saw Roadhog from Overwatch mock-up from a fan. Yeah, it's it's like it's definitely become very quickly, and it's funny because uh, so it's very quickly become like the game of the year right now, right? At least the game of this summer fall, whatever it is. It's like a hundred degrees here right now. Um, let me see. I'm just kind of go through. God, what the heck is this even? It's ridiculous. Some of this shit. <sighs> so, fall guys apparently blowing up. I have to take a look at it now. <laughs> now that I can actually use a controller. Um, game of the pandemic. There you go. Yeah, Animal Crossing was another one, right? The Scout uh, skin is coming soon, they said. Nice. It's like Animal Crossing. Yep. Quick summon, make a Darnell. That's right. Yeah, I don't think you can put any customization, custom characters in the game. Uh, they're just going to have like licenses, licensed characters put in. And uh, they're, up to, they're at 600,000 followers on Twitter yesterday. Where are they at today? Uh, they are at 666.5 thousand. It's crazy. Scout is in the store already? Yeah. It's it's going to be... This is going to be like... And that's what I wanted to say earlier. It's going to be like Fortnite, where they have a ton of licensing deals. They're going to have all this stuff. The game just absolutely has blown up. They had a really rough start initially because of the servers is being bombarded. Um, and even like when Declan was trying to play, it was like, poor kid, you get in. And the second we get in, it's just like, it just kick you out. Or sometimes it wouldn't... Uh, give a, give us his rewards and it's like next time you log in you get your rewards and it's like damn there's all these problems um but you know eventually they'll get that stuff ironed out and it'll become a uh it'll become a stable very much like fortnite has for sure i'm sure um imagine if they allow drawing on your being like in humans fall flat <laughs> i know it does you know it's funny it, it is it's there's so much potential for this game like they can they can definitely take it and turn it into a uh um well, I mean, like a, I don't say like a human fall flat, but but uh, give it more more diverse obstacles, or maybe it's not just a race; it could just be like you know a puzzle instead. Uh, the egg game is hella laggy on PC for me. You know what? I had to close out a bunch of things because I get like a lot of frame lag on it. Uh, I had to close out a bunch of windows, and, and eventually one of them triggered something that allowed it to actually play. So I had the same issues. Uh, Fall Guys devs have handled server issues better than most large companies. It's true. Esport. Oh man, I don't know about that, but sure, why not? Anything could be an esport nowadays. Why not? Why not? So yeah, so that's it. Fall Guys, basically number one game right now. Uh, they have higher peak players at GTA 5 on Steam, and that's saying something. That's right. That is saying something. That's insane. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely insane. Crazy. I wish they would take this concept and add better physics to it, like more skill-based uh, physics, if that makes sense. Right now, it's kind of low-skill ceiling, which is the reason why it's so popular. Uh, but yeah, they can they can definitely put more into it. They already have a grab feature. The right trigger will grab, and they have a dive feature. So if you think of this in terms of like Human Fall Flat, Human Fall Flat has a grab, you can aim the grab, which changes the, the changes the gameplay significantly. Uh, but still, they're not that far away from from making it so that they can have more uh, challenging skill based uh, games, even with the limited skill set that they have with the characters, uh, the current skill set, without adding anything new. So that's it for the news. Basically, epic, <laughs> epic versus Steam. Oh, sorry. Well, no, it used to be epic versus Apple versus Google. With Microsoft trailing behind. Yeah, go get them, Epic. Go get them. We'll see if anything comes from that. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike B. Also, most important part in his hand, Mike B gets injured. That's right. That's right. And it might get worse. It might get worse. Next time you guys see me Tuesday, uh, I might have even worse news. They might have to take this whole thing apart and just uh, dig in there and fix it, which is dumb. They're like, well, you might not be able to make a fist. And I'm like, I don't need to make a fist. What am I making fists for? I don't care if I have one. If I have one, just thank fingers. I don't care if my pink is out. Okay, well, that's a little bit extreme. But if it's like this, I don't care. I'm fine with that. What do I need this pinky for? I'm already halfway through my life. I've already done so much. I don't need that. I, I can tell you my usage stats on this thing is so low. I don't need it. It's like the right. That's the right shift key. Who uses right shift? So yeah, I'm fine with it being gone. It's fine. 
So we'll see. I'll let you guys know. <laughs> just got to be able to make a circle. Just uh, just enough. Uh, so thanks. So you use right shit. Well, yeah. My name is Mike B. Follow me, a.k.a. Mike B. On all the things. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Chat, hang out for a second. I'll come back. I got to finish this beer. And I'll see you. Bye. Karate chops. Oh, I, I, that's right. Can't karate chop. That's true. Oh, man. No karate chops. God, what am I going to do?